Hi, I'm Aniket, product line leader for our material characterization portfolio with Perkin Elmer. Today we're going to be talking about our Lambda 1050 UV Viz and IR instrument. These are scanning photometers that are capable of scanning between 175 and 3300 nanometers. Specifically, the accessory we're discussing today is our 150 uh, millimeter in gas integrating spheres. So, on the Lambda 1050, there are usually two parts um, that we're going to draw your attention to. This is a modular arrangement here. The sample compartment here, you have two cuvette holders here. These are standard 10 millimeter liquid cuvette holders that are capable of um, uh, measuring absorbance through the, through the sample, as well as a polarizer drive that is capable of measuring angular polarization um, of, uh, of, our, of our optical samples. Now, coming to the integrating sphere here, this is an accessory shown here of the small spot, uh, small spot kit that is capable of making very small measurements or very small um, spot sizes. Um, the integrating sphere itself consists of a transmittance port over here, and the back there is a reflectance port. So we can use these to measure transmittance of the sample or, in the, or have the sample at the back port and measure total reflectance. We also have a, a specular plug here. So for these are for samples that uh, we may want to measure um, diffuse reflectance, the uh, contribution of specular reflectance, and so on. So I'll put a few samples here, a few dummy samples here, and show you how the measurement would work. Um, so typically, we would auto zero the spectrometer, make sure we have a good baseline here. The reference that I have today for our uh, for auto zero, or we call as a hundred percent T, is a spectralon, or some people also call it a white disc or a white tile. But essentially, it's a spectralon um, that will be used for referencing. So we we'll close this large door here. The spectrometer is going to auto zero. And let's say if you have to measure the transmittance through this film this polymer film here. The transparency port at the very, uh, at the very uh, front of the sphere is spring-loaded, so we can very easily position um, this polymer, uh, polymer sample over here, um, close the instrument, and then hit go on the software. Essentially, what the software will do is take a scan of the, of the sample um, within the wavelength range specified and measure the contribution, measure the transmittance value from, uh, from these samples. But just as we showed with the polymer film, it is also possible to measure transmittance through a glass um, glass sample here shown. This is a thick, about five millimeter glass sample, uh, which we're going to measure on the integrating sphere. And similar to the polymer film, we'll position the glass sample over here, um, and the light, the light after scattering will go into the sphere, and all the light is, is measured within the sphere itself. So very easy to position samples in and out of, uh, of the transmittance port. Now, in the next example, we position a $20 currency note that has different ink patterns on the surface here and really show the, the, the importance of having a small spot accessory. Now, this accessory has two different kinds of lenses. It transmittance, a transmission lens here that will focus the beam right on the transmitted port and also a different reflectance lens that will focus the beam on the back port here on a very, very small uh, spot size of about two millimeters. So the advantage of having such a configuration is that I can look at the spectra that is produced because of, um, because of the ink at that particular spot and not have a signal contaminate with the adjoining region. Now, it is also possible to make measurements inside the integrating sphere. So here is what we call as a center mount accessory with a sample mounted on it. Um, this is what we call as a jaw style accessory that will help clamp the sample in between the two jaws. To make a measurement, we'll remove the top part of the sphere here and then pretty much drop the center mount accessory right inside the sphere. There are a couple of nuts here that will help lock it in place right there. There is a goniometer mounted on top of the sphere here or on top of the accessory here that will allow us to make positive or negative measurements, um, angular measurements, as we dial the knob one way or the other. We also have a polarizer drive in the sample compartment that will allow us to study the effect of polarization in optical materials. So here is a polarizer that can be mounted on the polarizer drive. So pretty much just goes in, snaps in place, there's a groove there. What the polarizer will do is it's capable of rotating the polarizer crystal um, 180 degrees, so 0 to 180 degrees, uh, both in positive and negative angles that will allow us to study the effect of polariza polarization or depolarization on the optical material. We have a general purpose optical bench here that can be inserted in the sample compartment. The slides in here fits perfectly well. So this is used in cases where you may want to have your own custom optical setup lined up along the sample and their reference beams. In order to make reflectance measurements on the sphere, we will use the back part of the sphere. And uh, in this example, I have a glass mirror which 
I'll take off the spectral lawn and position the glass sample here. Again, this is spring loaded here, so it goes right in place. And we're able to make, once we close the door, we're able to make total reflectance measurements on the sample. And then remove what we call as a specular plug on the sphere. Now, this specular plug, once we remove this, will allow the reflected signal to be dumped outside the sphere. So whatever then remains inside the sphere is the diffuse reflectance of the particular sample. To show what the data from this instrument looks like, this is a specialty chromator that, uh, that I have analyzed here for total reflectance measurements. It starts from 2,500 nanometers in the near infrared range, and then as we get into the visible and the UV range, there are some distinct spectral features that are shown uh, in, the, in the graph here. Now, the Lambda 1050 is a modular device, which means that it is possible to exchange the detectors from one to other. So I'll show an example of how we change from a 150 millimeter integrating sphere into what we call as a URA, or universal reflectance accessory that is used for making specular measurements. So we will lift this up, and there it goes. What exposes this detector area where there are pins here, as soon as we drop a new accessory in, these pins will communicate with the accessory, the, the instrument, and the software, and let it know what kind of accessory has been inserted. To drop in a new accessory for the URA, it's come in here, drop it in, the URA goes in the place and sits right in there. What we're showing here is called a URA or universal reflectance accessory that is used to make um, specular measurements, specular reflectance measurements in, in particular. So the URA is a, is a very simple to use uh, detector capable of measuring up to 3.3 microns here. Um, typically, these are used for specular samples. Uh, shown in this example here, a standard mirror which is uh, very well polished here. We will simply place a sample on the top part of the URA and then place a cover on top of it. Now in this configuration, the software is capable of measuring specular reflectance that is coming off the sample. Thank you for taking the time to learn about our UV-Viz NIR instrument, the Lambda 1050. For more information on this and other accessories that we have to enable high-end uh, UV-Viz NIR measurements, visit us at www.perkinelmer.com. Thank you.